Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and one thing I'm faced with when building logo or art is to create a trim outline for stickers, a scissor cut, or just for emphasis. You can just as soon use the pen tool to draw your edge, but it's imprecise and time consuming to say the least. So how do you get that perfect border around your shape? Simple. Just use the stroke and the appearance window. I'll even give you a few scenarios in which you can master the technique. They are, number one, build a trim outline around a simple shape. Number two, build your outline around a shape with no fill and create an outline for professional printing or output around a complex shape. Once you're done, you will not believe how easy this is to do. So without further ado, let's go. All right, let's get started. First thing I want to mention to you is that we are using the Essentials Classic Layout. To change to the Essentials Classic Layout, all you need to do is hover over Switch Workspace, click on it, and select Essentials Classic. The reason I use Essentials Classic is because it's a familiar layout that presents all of the elements that I need in an easy to access way. Next thing I want to mention to you is that we are using Smart Guides. To activate Smart Guides, all you need to do is go to View, select Smart Guides, or click Control U. Next thing I want to mention is that we are going to be using the bottom center of the page to highlight key command recommendations, hotkey recommendations, and tips and tricks. On that note, we're building our piece using a PC. If you're using a Mac, all you need to do is to swap the command key anytime the control key is recommended. Control equals command. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and give ourselves that outline stroke for our simple shape. In this case, it is the Sunflower Designs artwork that you see on the page. Let's bring our page to zero to start. That brings the entire page into view. First thing we're going to do is we are going to select our shape. Any existing shape will do. We're using a Sunflower Designs logo right here. Let's select that. And the first thing we're going to do before we do any sort of outlining is we are going to go to Object, Expand Appearance. We'll select that. That changes any effects to solids and strokes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Object and select Expand. That takes any strokes and expands them to fills. Once we've done that, we're going to do one more step. We're going to select Object, Group if it's not grouped together, and that treats our complex object as a single shape. Once done with that, let's go ahead and be sure our shape is selected. Let's open up our appearance window. You can do that if you're using the Essentials Classic layout by clicking on the appearance icon on the right sidebar, or you can go to Window, Appearance, or of course select Shift F6. With the appearance window open, what we're going to do, we are going to select to create a new stroke. We're going to do that by scrolling down to the bottom left of our window, clicking Add New Stroke. Once we've got that, let's go ahead and change our stroke color to red. It can be any color, but we want to make sure it is something that does not appear on either our background or our actual art. Next thing we're going to do, we are going to grab our stroke and drag it beneath our contents. That's going to allow our contents to show in front of our stroke. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to select our stroke and then increase our stroke so that there are no gaps either inside or between the shapes. So let's get started doing that. Notice that there are gaps between the letters and between the flower and the name. We want to increase it until there are no gaps. All right, it looks like 34 points is the sweet spot there. That looks good, but one thing that's worth noting right here, if we zoom into our shape, is that there's an inconsistency with how our curves set up. So how are we going to fix that? Let's bring our page back into view completely, and let's fix that. The way we do that is we click on our stroke, and then let's change the caps and corners to round. If we deselect our shape, you'll notice that we've got round edges all the way around. When we finally complete our outline stroke, it'll make it much easier to trim manually around that, or of course, it gives a nicer, more rounded visual effect. All right, the next thing we do to create our stroke 
is let's go ahead and select our shape one more time. Let's click on our red stroke, and then let's go ahead and add new stroke. That will present the stroke in the same width and color as previous. What we're going to do now is we're going to select our bottommost stroke, and we're going to change the color from red to black. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and increase our stroke two points so that it becomes visible underneath the red stroke. Once we're done with that, let's go ahead and change our red stroke to white. That looks great right there. Let's go ahead and deselect our stroke and our shape. And that's exactly what we're looking for right there. If you want to change your stroke color, all you need to do is select your shape once again, click on your bottom stroke, that's the black stroke, and select the stroke color that you want. In this case, you might want a very light gray color so that you can easily trim around it. Let's go ahead and select C0, M0, Y0, K20. Let's click on that. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape and our color. That looks pretty good. Let's move on to the next one. All right, what if you've got a shape that's got gaps in it that you don't want to have the outline stroke appearing inside. Notice the space between the rings and the planet in this case. Let's go ahead and fix that. Well, the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and cover those spaces. Remember, there's nothing in those spaces right now. So if you've got a white background, let's cover it with a white shape. And let's go ahead and draw shapes that fill those spaces. The way I do that is I'm going to grab my pen tool and draw a shape that covers those spaces. What I want here is I want a white fill and a transparent stroke. Go ahead and draw the shape. That looks good right there. Let's go ahead and draw it on the other side as well. Okay, that's perfect right there. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and let's select both shapes. The way we do that is we'll select the first shape, it's already selected, and let's hold our shift key and select our second shape, just like that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on it, go to arrange, Send to back. That's perfect right there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to drag across our entire shape just like that. Let's go ahead and go to Object, Expand Appearance. Again, back to Object, Expand. And with our shapes still selected, we're going to go to Object Group. We can also hit Control G. Once we've got that, let's get to the business of drawing our outline stroke. Once again, we'll open our Appearance window. We can click here, or of course, we can go Window, Appearance. Additionally, we can select Shift F6. Once we've got that, our shape is selected. Let's go to Add a New Stroke. Let's change our stroke color to red, or any color that doesn't appear in the background or the shape. And then let's go ahead and drag our stroke down beneath Contents. Once we've got that, let's reselect our stroke. And let's increase our stroke thickness to 20 points. You can either incrementally go up to 20, or you can just select five points or whatever points it's on, and write in 20 and select. Notice right away we get that value. If we deselect our shape right here, notice that there is no stroke in the area between our rings and planet. That's exactly what we want right there. Let's go ahead and reselect our shape. Let's select our stroke once again. And let's click Add New Stroke. Again, that's going to add a new stroke with the same color and thickness as the stroke above it. Let's select our bottom stroke, and let's change our stroke color to black once again. Let's increase that stroke color two points to 22. That will allow it to be visible underneath our original stroke. And then the last step, of course, is changing our red stroke to white. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape. There you go. Notice once again that there is no stroke between our planet and rings. That's exactly how we want it. If you don't want to use this stroke as a clipping path, perhaps you want to use it to add emphasis to your shape. All you need to do is select your shape and, of course, increase the stroke thickness to whatever you want. In this case, let's take it all the way up to 32. That looks pretty good right there. We can always change the color of our stroke as well to add a different sort of emphasis. In this case, let's select it and let's change it to blue. That looks all right right there. Let's go ahead and deselect. There you go. Let's move on to our next step. All right, let's take a look at our next sample right here. What if we have 
a piece that contains all strokes and no background fills. If we switch our background to red, you can see what this piece would look like with an alternative background. There you go. Here's what our piece would look like if we just expanded our elements and then added the stroke using the appearance window. Take a look. Note the number of strokes that are in the piece and also note how unusable that piece is. So how can we make it usable? Well, all we'll need to do is add a background fill to it and then we can go ahead and complete our piece. So let's get started doing that. All right, the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and change our fill from transparent to white. We could do that a couple of ways. The first way we could do it is use our pen tool and draw a shape to occupy our outermost stroke or the area that we want to be in white. Or, of course, another way we could do it is since we know that this is a circle, is grab our ellipse tool and draw a circle to match our width. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our ellipse tool. We'll select our rectangle tool and let's select our ellipse tool. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to hover over the center of our shape. Note again that we've got smart guides turned on. And then we're going to click and start dragging out our ellipse. To expand our ellipse from center, we'll, we'll press the Alt key. And then to make our expansion symmetrical, we'll press our Shift key. Let's go ahead and drag it out to width. That's perfect right there. Once we're done with that, let's go ahead and push our new fill shape to the back. The way we do that, we'll grab our selection tool. Let's go ahead and right click on our shape. Let's select a range and let's select send to back. Additionally, you can always go to object, arrange, send to back, or of course, press shift control, open bracket. Next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and select our entire shape by dragging across it with our selection tool. Once done, let's go to Object, Expand. Note that Expand Object, Fill, and Stroke are selected. Let's keep them selected and let's click OK. Once done, let's select Expand one more time just to make sure we're all set and sorted. All right, once done, let's go ahead and go back to Object and select Object, Group. That ensures that our complex shape will be treated as one simple shape. Now that we've got that, Let's keep our object selected and let's go with the process of adding our outline stroke. Here's how we're going to do it. Let's go ahead and select our appearance window. And then let's go ahead back to the bottom right and select add new stroke. Let's select that. Once that's up, let's grab our stroke and drag it back behind contents. Let's change the color to a color that does not appear in either the shape or the background. In this case, let's go with a light blue. Looks good right there. Let's deselect that. And now let's go ahead and increase our stroke thickness to 20. We can either increase it incrementally or, of course, just drag across our number and write 20 and enter. That looks pretty good right there. Next thing we're going to do with our stroke still selected, let's go ahead and add a new stroke. Let's select our bottom stroke and let's change the stroke color from blue to black. And then let's go ahead and increase the stroke thickness from 20 to 22. That will make it visible behind our blue stroke. Next thing we'll do is let's go ahead and change our blue stroke to white. Let's go ahead and deselect our stroke and let's go ahead and deselect our shape. That looks pretty good right there. Let's take a look at what it would look like with a white background. There you go. If you want to change the black stroke, to any other color or change the thickness, all you need to do is go ahead and select your shape, change the stroke color to whatever you want. In this case, let's lighten it up to C0M0Y0K30, and then let's go ahead and increase the stroke thickness to 32. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape. There you go. Let's go on to the next one. All right, what if you've got a complex four color shape that you want to send to a professional printer to make lots of copies for a sticker? This is more complex in a couple of reasons. First of all, in this case, notice the effects that I've applied in my appearance window. I'll open that right now. And let's go ahead and select it. Notice that I've got a gradient and several different strokes as well as transform effects associated with this. 
Before I create an outline stroke, what I want to do is get rid of all those effects and instead incorporate them into the shape. So once again, here's what I'll do. With my shape still selected, I'm going to go to Object, Expand Appearance. Notice right away that it converts all of the effects into filled elements. We're going to go back to Objects. We'll select Expand. This time around, it's going to take all of our strokes and convert them to filled elements. Let's be sure that Fill and Stroke are selected, and let's click OK. Now that we've got all of our strokes as filled shapes, we need to do one more thing. Let's make sure that our object is grouped together. So let's go to Object Group. It is grouped. That's great news. Let's go ahead and deselect, and let's go to the business of adding our outline stroke. Once again, with our shape still selected, we are going to go down, and we'll select Add New Stroke. With our stroke now added, let's go ahead and grab it. Let's drag it down beneath Contents. Let's change our stroke color from black to once again red or any color that does not appear either our shape or background so we can see it most clearly. And let's go ahead and increase our stroke thickness to 20 points. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and have a look at what it looks like without the shape selected. That's perfect right there. Let's continue, let's reselect our shape and let's select our stroke once again. Let's click Add New Stroke. Once again, this adds a new stroke with the same stroke color and thickness as the previous stroke selected. Let's select our bottom stroke. Let's change our stroke color to black. And let's increase the thickness to 22 points. Let's change our top stroke color to white. And let's go ahead and deselect our stroke and our shape. That's exactly what we're looking for, but how do we give our printer the cues needed to create that die cutter that's going to allow them and us to stamp out that shape exactly how we want? Well, here's how we're going to do it. We need to change our black outline stroke to a color that's independent of the CMYK color build. Now, the CMYK color build is what we use to print any document. Again, that's cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. When a printer prints something, they use plates to do it oftentimes. So we want to create a plate that's not any of those colors. So here's how we do it. We're going to select our shape, and let's go ahead and click on our black stroke. Let's click on it again. And let's go to the bottom left, and let's click on Swatch Libraries menu. Once we select that, let's go over to Color Books, and let's select Pantone Solid Color. We can select any of these, but this is the easiest way to do it. The Pantone library is a color swatch library that allows you to print in the actual colors or spot colors as they're called. In this case, we're going to select a spot red. We'll select this middle red here. It's called Pantone Red 032C. Double click on that. And let's double click on it one more time. Notice right away our stroke color becomes red. Let's go ahead and close our library. And let's deselect our shape. Well, while it appears that we've only added just a red stroke around our shape, we've done something else. When we ask a printer to print this, they have the option of only printing that red stroke. How will they or you do it? All you need to do is go to File, Print. And once the print window is open up, notice that we're printing to Adobe PDF. That's fine as our printer. We're going to select Output. And notice on the output mode, we've got composite. If we click on that drop down menu, we can select separations. Let's select that. When we select separations, note our document ink options. This presents the inks that they can print. Notice that process cyan, process magenta, process yellow, and process black are selected along with Pantone Red 032C. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and deselect all of the process colors and leave Pantone Red 032C still selected. Let's go ahead and print. We're going to save this as separations. I've already got this file here. Click and save that. We'll replace it. And now that we've printed, all we need to do is open up our file. Notice that it's opening up in my web browser and take a look. This is the final file 
that will allow us or the printer to create the die cut to print our sticker. And with that, as we cut back to our original shape, we are done. Well done. Now build some stickers. Go send your logos and art out to the world. You have got no excuse. Now, with that being said, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. And otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you later. Peace. Peace.